Uh, everybody out there in podcast land and in Boston, uh, we are here with the uh, Transformative Culture Project and also Ant Thomas and his team. And we wanted to talk a little bit more about what you do, your students, the program, and also what brought you to this point. Man, just thank you for the opportunity. Always, always good to connect. My guy, Justin, I can get to connect with you as well. I'm here with my students, been working with the Transformative Culture Project at Creative Classrooms, uh, working together with them and been teaching them actually uh, Latin Academy and Fenway High School mm -hmm. from September until now, and we're mm -hmm. working on the final project. Uh, so, I mean, I want I would like for them to introduce yeah. themselves. So we've been working on the project. I'm gonna tell y'all a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. but these are the fly wizards. Okay. So can y'all fly wizards, can you all tell them your names, please? Yo, I'm Jaciel. I'm 13. I'm representing EV Ethereal Visions. I'm also working with my boy Ant and the Fly Wizards. We gonna make it big for the future, making sure everyone who wants to pursue their dreams can do that. We're gonna be the voice of the youth for sure. It's Millie Mills. Um, I'm a singer, songwriter, and poet. And I go to VLA. Um, I'm gonna be 17. And I've been working with Mr. Ant since September. My name is Janoy. My name is Janoy. What school do you go to? I go to Fenway High School. Great, Happy to have you here, brother. Nice to be here. I'm in grade nine. Uh, you write? You sing? You rap? What's your thing? I draw. Okay, you're a drawer, you are. Yeah. That's what's up. That's a superpower, bro. Superpower player. Mm -hmm. Yo, my name's James. Mm -hmm. I'm 12, about to turn 13. I go to BLA. I'm a writer and a rapper. And I'm working with the Fly Wizards, Mr. Ant as my teacher. And I like the journey so far. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, so, so. so let's do up in here. Look at that play. Yeah, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about CCP and the concept behind it, and how youth are involved with it, and um, the why behind it. Uh, so pretty much uh, the class the class is the art of hip hop. Mm -hmm. And so TCP reached out to me as an artist in the community and wanting to get more artists in the classroom uh, and getting the, the students also, uh, giving the students the opportunity to express themselves creatively in an artistic way. And so we've been covering the art of hip hop since September till now. Mm -hmm. And so like going through pretty much uh, the start of hip hop, yeah. right in the beginning, who started Inception, it. like what, when did it start, right? What are the elements right. and, right. and with different eras, going through different eras. So like, you know, I'll, I'll start the quizum right now. Okay, okay. If so you, if so you talk about to. the five elements that you know that's the actual um, elements that we all know of relevant to hip hop. That well, I would want them to talk about. What, yeah, so what are the elements? What are the elements? What are the elements? Who wants to speak on the elements? James, I'm gonna know both James and Jocio can bring okay. them on. Jocio, you got it? Yeah. Um, graffiti. All right. DJing. DJing. B boying. B boying. MC MC and fashion. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, what's your what's your concepts and um, what's your uh, thinking behind hip hop and, and how you want to add value to it yourself? I, I don't. I apologize. I Nilly, that's Nilly. Nilly. Yeah. Um, it's Nilly again. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, what's what's your um value val, value add to the hip hop scene? What do you like to bring, but also what inspires you? Um, I'm gonna be honest. I keep it real in my music, so I talk about experiences that I have gone through okay. or that I've seen my friends gone through. Okay. Always making sure that I'm not taking that story for myself. Uh -huh. Um, I want to add some real meaning, some real advocacy to uh -huh. music. I don't want it to just be. No, I wanted to like you hear it, you meaningful, feel something. Meaningful, meaningful, yeah. substance, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you if you could say um, at any point in time, 
who is your inspiration? And if somebody was to say, okay, who do, who do you remind, who, who's reminding you of who, what you do, who would that person be? And that's already in two parts. Um, first of all, Mr. Ant, because he actually let me Did come out my, my, my show, because uh -huh. I was really- He unlocked you? He unlocked you a little bit? Yeah, he unlocked me a little bit. That's what's up, that's what's um, up. But also, I always had a, like, a connection with Cardi B and Bad Bunny. Okay. So my music kind of resembles them, All but right. I make it my own, yeah. you know. You personalize it. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. So if you wanted to talk a little bit about your um, production and what inspired you and who were some of the producers that kind of got you to where you are, how you think about your production. Okay. About to say, but I just wanted to talk with the producer. Well, he's more of the vocalist. Jossiel is a producer. So, production is yeah, over so here? Yeah, so to Jossiel. Yeah, this is a production. producer right yeah. here. Producer uh, extraordinaire. Tell us what's your inspire, uh, um, inspiration. So, ever since I was a kid, <laughs> right. I always dreamt of having my own song and, like, just the beats was crazy. Like, I always grew up. I, the my my background they don't really listen to that to American stuff so I had to like find out everything on my own like when I first heard rap music yeah the first song that I ever heard that was rap was it was a good day by Ice Cube and this was mm -hmm. like I was like fire fire I was like fire five song. years old <laughs> and fire I heard song. the beat and it was just like I heard the beat and all I seen was like palm trees and sunny and 7 a.m. type stuff so i always wanted to like yeah. create visuals through production if that makes sense okay yeah. yeah so i think some producers that inspired me like some big names probably dr dre when it comes to like just real rap stuff i go to dr dre for my inspiration when it comes to r b People don't really notice, but Michael Jackson actually produced a lot of his own stuff. So Michael Jackson's one of my favorite producers and he also inspires me a lot. And for modern stuff, when I look for inspiration, I look at Pierre Bourne, cause mm -hmm. he really just, he broke the box for trap music. Like right. Now this a whole underground scene right now, it was all inspired by Pierre Bourne. So those are my three producers that really inspired me. So we're gonna talk a little bit about tech. In, re in relation to production. What type of software do you use? Do you use a digital audio workstation? Do you use an on, um, use an online um, platform for production? Um, or what's, what's the software that helps you be creative? Hold the, hold the mic up. Hold the mic up, yeah. So I use a, I use a DAW. DAW? Um, yeah. Right. So learning it was very difficult at first. Yep. But basically what I did to practice was this I just produced mass amounts of trash beats. Like trash, right? You had to begin. It was trash. trash. Like, it was trash. And then you, you slowly got better, yeah. right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want people to think that if you keep making beats that are trash, that they're just going to get better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What I did, what made me better, beats. actually, like, what made me better was I sent these trash beats to my friends and I'd be like, yo, what do you think? And they just bully me, bro. Like, right. It was terrible, but. You gotta see past that and like see that they're actually giving you like real feedback. Mm -hmm. So I told myself every day I'm gonna make five beats every day. And this mm -hmm. was during quarantine. So I had all the time on my hands. I was gonna use my time efficiently. So as I said, every day I'm gonna make five beats and I'm not gonna sleep until I make those five beats. And then I sent all these five beats every day to my friends and then they give me feedback and eventually I just Right. He can't go to He's only 13. Mom. And you're only 13. Right? Let's give it up for being 13 and, and, and putting yourself under the fire in the microscope, right? So I guess I guess I guess from you saying what you just said, talk to us a little bit about the critiquing and how the critiquing helped you like hone your craft a little bit. So the critique. It all really comes down to being able to take it and really just understand like you gotta understand that what they're saying is true. So when I first started off, I had, I had no, I did not know anything about mixing or like, you know, just mixing and mastering. I did not know anything about that. So I would send these beats and then the kick would like overcome the EQ and like everything mm -hmm. would just be bassy and stuff and right. you can't even hear the main melody. Like it was just trash. Yeah. So they'd be like, yo, you gotta fix this. And then uh, a person that I used to look up to at the time 
who's who I've now surpassed, in my opinion. Uh, his Low name cocky, is, I like that. I like that. His name is Bluesum, and he's like from the UK. And he, he, we were in a collective together, and he was just like everyone looked up to him because he was like the amazing producer and singer or whatever. And he would help me. I would ask him for help and stuff. He was a little reluctant because you know he think he that he that dude, but right. he'd help me. And I can say that if it wasn't for him. I wouldn't know, like, those little things that I have to fix when right. the beat's finished and stuff. So right. I took help from big dudes that I know, like, are really with that. And I also just took the critique. The critique is very important. Like, you got to, like, really see what's wrong with the beat and go back and fix it. Or what I used to do, I just make a new beat and take all the critique that they gave me and make sure everything was solid with that. Make something new. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about the album the concept behind the album and how many cuts you're gonna actually have on the album itself. Okay, so the album, the way we came up with it, uh, we were just in the classroom, Mr. Ann was like, all right, we're in a creating stages. And this is the part we've all been waiting for because for the longest time, we were just learning about the 80s, the 90s, and the 60s. Yeah, can we learn about the 2000s? Yeah. <laughs> no. That was, born. Yeah, that was, and then I was not really enjoying the writing, but, I knew this was gonna happen, yeah. so, and I do like like, if it wasn't for Mr. Ant, I would not know like as much as I do now about hip hop. Like the five elements, I did not know that before. I still really don't know the five elements. Okay, you'll learn. But the way we came up with it, we was all chilling. He was like, "All right, we're in the creative stages. What, what are we going for?" And the new Kendrick album had just came out. It was Mr. Morale and the Big Stepper. And then I was like, Mr. Ant, your name is Mr. Ant. Okay. Um, we all kind of look up to you, you're our teacher. So, and we're fly, we're different. Wizards are mysterious. Why don't we just call it Mr. Ant and the Fly Wizards? There you go. And then the concept behind Mr. Aaron the Fly Wizards, the Fly Wizards, he's walking so we can fly. There you go. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So let's give it up for Ant, first and foremost, for inspiring all of you, right? But also, I wanted to kind of get a sense of, and this is more so about you and, and your why and your direction, but also talk a little bit about like your history in Boston in relation to music and how that has developed into what we see right now on the stage. Okay, I mean, I had a couple, I can just speak about a couple things, but right. one of the things that uh, is cool, so since we've been doing this project, I've been supporting them too. So Jossio had a performance last night. Right. And just to talk about how things are full circle, I'm gonna use that as an example. The performance was at the Hibernian Hall the Hibernian Hall uh, where Madison Park is, they used to host this annual book called the Roxbury Literary Annual. Mm -hmm. And I actually submitted a couple pieces on, it, and I had to explain why Roxbury was important to me. And then I had to submit a couple pieces and I submitted a couple pieces and one of my poems got published, Shackles. Nice. And that got published when I was 18 years old. Nice. Uh, and I was I, I, I was remembering back then uh, I had I did they, they put us in a week writing program and then they invited a couple of us back to perform and we got paid to do it uh, and my money's always good money is always, money's always good. good right 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 money's always good. and and I, I had my performance right before I went to prom right. so like I went I went and did my performance in full suit and went yeah, but um, dedicated. dedicated, very dedicated. Yeah, dedicated. One of the things that that like I remember, I didn't tell anybody back yeah. then, so like I didn't really have a community. Right. Uh, I would say, um, but like fast forward to last night, I'm watching them perform, and at, at, as you heard, Jossio said he already he already works with a crew, yeah. and like and a couple of his his guys were there last night, right. and so like you could see fast forward however many years like between like when i graduated high school till now 
the community in Boston is developing around music. Yeah, yeah. But I would say even before that, I also had a performance there with my dad. Uh, and that's who I would say mostly introduced me to music. Yeah. My dad is an entertainer. Yeah. He was a dancer, b-boy. Um, and he, he danced with the funk effects. He danced by himself. Yeah. Uh, and he also worked with Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Yeah. Uh, he was in that group and I was coming on stage back then. Uh, uh, opening up for them, like getting the crowd hyped and, and music videos. So, so talk to me a little bit about, and and, and you just t touched on it on a little bit of the surface, but I want you to dive a little bit deeper about the importance of passing the baton, right? Knowing that it's time to pass it on to someone or a group of individuals younger, um, talented, a little bit more passionate. Not saying that you know we don't have the passion, but it's like okay, I've had my run. Now it's time to pass the baton on to someone else. Right. Uh, I think it's super important. I I feel like there there were less players than there are now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think sometimes people are so caught up in trying to put themselves on right. uh, that they they're not thinking about reaching back. Right. Uh, and. You know, that's just been something that's that's always been in me. Like even at the show last night, yeah. I saw two uh, two young people there, and I'm calling them young, but they're only a couple years younger than me. Right. And I was coaching them in basketball, and one of them makes music. The other one was just there to support the event. Right. But like, and it just I just I saw the importance of trying to reach back early on, right. and so like I think it's still important. Our I remember being their age and not having the tools. We're about to go to the studio after this. I didn't right. see a studio until I was 22 years old. Like a real studio when right, I was 13. Right, right. When I was 13, we were trying to like make music off of a karaoke machine. <laughs> and like, like seriously, that's what we was doing. And like, and we was trying, we had, there oh, were talent shows. I understand, shows. I understand, bro. Right, <laughs> right. There were it's talent shows. We was trying to win the money. So right, that's, what right. we was, that's when we was going for talent yeah. shows. So um, discuss a little bit, and this might be more so for the end of Behind you, talk a little bit about group cohesion and how like that is very important to like bringing a project from concept to actual, you know, delivery. Uh, do one of you all want to take that? Okay. Hi, it's Millie Nils again. Millie um, Nils. <laughs> <laughs> so I talked a little bit before about how Mr. Ant helped me get out of my shell, but it's also like James and Jaciel pushing me to be better and like kind of supporting me even if what I said was like not it or what I felt was not it they were like nah that actually is really nice they would give me some pointers like you gotta say it with attitude you gotta say it with confidence and last night I was on the phone with Jaciel and I was making one of the verses for the song that we have together and I was like I don't know what to do like what is it missing and Jaciel said something to me and he was like if you don't figure it out no one will like it's your music, you gotta go for it. If whatever you think is right is right. Mr. Ant also said that in the car when I told him about the phone call with Jaffeo, so <laughs> just wanna put that out there. Anybody else wanna talk a little bit about the uh, group cohesion? Man, group cohesion, very important. I feel like it flows very well, like, cause when you really look at it, we're just like a whole bunch of young people. Right. We became, like me and James, we were already friends. The only reason that we joined the Art of Hip Hop thing is because like, I didn't want to join Black Film Club anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was last second. Yeah, it was last second. And then I was like, oh, Art of Hip Hop, that seems cool. We were already cool. And then Nilly, Nilly, Nilly's energy, man. Like, yeah. When you first meet Millie, it's like you've known her for 10 years already. She's very hype. She's always positive. And the thing about Nelly though is that she always second guesses herself. Mm -hmm. And like she said, me and James are always there to support her. So is Mr. Ant and Jaleese too. I wish she was here. Um, but yeah, group cohesion flows very well. We just all support each other, keep things positive. So talk to us a little bit about um, when you need to communicate to others that something's not working. Like, is, do y'all have difficult discussions? And when y'all have difficult discussions, what is it that you do in order to kind of initiate that discussion so that we can hash out whatever it is? So I feel like the most difficult discussion that we've had was on Friday, me and Nelly had an argument 
about uh the studio session. Yeah. And it was like it was a little bit petty. It was a little bit stupid. Um, a little bit. <laughs> that was like the most major thing that we had. But all we did, all I said, because I don't really like to argue like that. I just said, hey, we'll figure this out later. Mm-hmm. And then I think she was still a little bit annoyed. So she was like, okay, bye. <laughs> but then later, Mr. Ann was like, hey, y'all got to chill. And then she was like, okay, I respect what you're saying. And we hashed it out. And me and James, we be going back and forth. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> We, cause me and James were like brothers, like and okay. brothers fight a lot. Like, right. You don't fight with your brother, that is not your brother. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. But the way me and James just hash that it out, not your brother. <laughs> <laughs> nah. The way me and James hash it out, we just give each other the space that we need right. for a bit, you know. And then we come back and we act like nothing happened. Right. So, um, and this is for each one of you all. Talk to the audience a little bit about. Um, a superpower or a talent that you have that nobody knows about. I'm a I dance like a lot. Okay. That's I started this whole music thing before I started recording and stuff when I was a little jit. That's what I was doing. I was little dancing. jit. Okay, yeah, I don't know what that jit. is. I'm like, what's this jit? Little 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 little, yeah, little person. Little okay, yeah. okay, got you. Got I was you. dressing up as Michael Jackson and stuff. Oh, okay. Bothering my parents. You got some Michael Jackson dancing, people. That's what's dancing. up. Huh? Love it. She's a dancing machine. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, baby. Hit a talent, super superpower. Yeah. It's Millie Mills again. I'm gonna keep saying it. Millie um, Mills. I like the branding. That's <laughs> branding. Right. Off rep, right? And I also dance. But one thing that people don't really know is that, like, I don't really sample. Like, I, there is such things like as sampling and trying to get your own melody. I make my own melodies and I sing and rap. Like, you guys know this a little bit, but like, I'll show you some of my hidden stuff. Yeah. Fire. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what's up. We love it. We love I, it. I think another cool thing Nelly does is Nelly is like bilingual with the with the rap and rap. the art. Okay. About that. I would like to drop that in there too. That's what's up. That's what's up. Love it. Superpower, head and talent. Talk, talk to us. I don't really have one. Okay. Um. Do Do you feel like you're gonna own one in the near future? Hmm. Are you gonna Are you gonna try to develop one in the near future? Yeah, I'll try. That's what's up. No, I think he's already doing. You yeah, say he got a job. Yeah, he does. He oh. does art. He he. That's good. People don't know that he does he art. He does art. So that's his, so that's his, 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 his thing, right? Yeah, that's okay. his thing. That's we'll shine the mic, but we'll, we'll, we'll peel you back. We'll that's what, but look, that he expresses himself yeah. through visually, through yeah. visual arts. That's what's up. Superpower. Superpower, hidden talent. Fly. You always have to fly for this. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yo, it's James. One of my hidden talents that I think I have is all my life I've had a very creative mind. I think outside of the box, other, like, other, like, different from other people. (laughs) (laughs) And because of that, I like, like to express my feelings in different kind of ways because of the fact that in some points they get so complex that there's no normal way to share them out. Mm. It's multi-layered, right? It's multifaceted, and you just can't just take it surface. You have to dive deep into it. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. That's dope. So talk to us a little, Mr. Ant. Talk to us a little bit about one of your uh, superpowers ahead and talents. I, I would, I would say it's well. That, that's that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that, right, right, right. Yeah. But I guess we're, I'm here because I'm teaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Millie said teaching. I would, but I would say that I would say teaching is is a superpower. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Yeah. I would say that teaching is a superpower. Yes. And. I feel like it's my opportunity to pass on the information that I have collected this entire time. Okay. So, and and I've been collecting a whole lot of information, and I would that would I would say that that's my other superpower is yeah. collecting information. Right. I could go a lot of places that a lot of people can't go. Right. And collect that information and give it back and and translate it in a way that people yeah. can understand it. Yeah. Make it um how you say um palpable for others. Exactly. Know? And um, so, so I guess to wrap up, um, Transform the Culture Project, CCP, what do y'all have plans for in the future of 2022 going into 2022? Uh, well, I would like to keep it to 2022. 
Uh, we, we, we actually, uh, so we're actually working on Mr. Ant and the Fly Wizards, the EP. Okay. Uh, and we have, we're having a showcase, a final showcase in just a couple weeks. Okay. On June 15th, right here. All right. Uh, at the Fairmont Innovation Lab. Dope. So, uh, that is on June 15th from mm -hmm. 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. The event is actually already on my website. It's it's free to come. We're yeah. asking people to donate if they can. Right. Uh, but you can find that on my website, antthomas.com slash events. And Dope. all of that information is already up there. So uh, everyone, give out your social media handles so individuals know where to find you, uh, follow your work, follow your music, and also follow your brand and what you do. If, if you all have social media handles. Uh, they just passed it to me, so um, on all social medias, my handle is Yasiel, that's J-A-S-S-I-E-L, 617, on all social medias. <coughs> and for streaming platforms, such as SoundCloud, Spotify, it is Yasiel, in all capitals, J-A-S-S-I-E-L. That's what's up. I'm not gonna lie, I changed my social media last night and I forgot what it was. But <laughs> you search up N I L F R A V I, I'll pop up. Like, no one has my name. I'm just like that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't have one. All right, you can pass it on. Yeah, neither do I. All right. So it's a couple social media handles and. And then there's mine. You can find me at thomas.com. Uh, outside of that, my social media is at ant underscore thomas, the number two, the letter mm -hmm. F. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, my, uh, I just started, what's, what's the other one, TikTok, I just started TikTok, I hope my, my students aren't laughing at me, <laughs> <laughs> they weren't, good, 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 right. I just started TikTok, it's Aunt Thomas, right. O-I-I-M-C. Alright, so leave the audience with one jewel that you want them to take away from this conversation. The, the power, the power of young people connecting to to people who have been on the journey for a little bit longer when we really tap in with each other i i feel like the it's it's both ways like yeah. they i'm giving it's a them transference energy. of energy right i'm giving them yeah. energy they're, they're giving, giving me energy, energy. Yeah, yeah so it's reciprocity and the into in the interaction itself. absolutely absolutely so, so, love it so go ahead oh uh, jewel i want to leave the audience with Oh, um, a jewel I want to leave the audience with is you're never too young or old to start because 13, 17, we still making music. We still doing what we love. Awesome. One jewel I want to leave the audience with is always be confident. Like when I do these shows, I've done some shows. Um, one thing that I was really scared of is that I'm going to be judged. But then, like, you perform, and even if you mess up, they're, they're gonna support you. Like, they're gonna cheer you on. So always be confident. And if anything's more important than music, I feel like it's stage presence. Yeah. So if you, a dude with swag like me, have stage presence, <laughs> you have stage presence, crazy. right? Yeah. Awesome. More awesome. important than music. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm um, coming to you from Family Innovation Lab, uh, at Transformative Culture Project, Face Me Studios, CCP. We appreciate you all for coming down, um, giving us your energy, your time, and also your wisdom. And we would like to make sure that you are um, coming back and reinvigorating the young minds as things progress. And we thank you, and we want to make sure you get a round of applause to all of you. Right? that note um you know we're gonna wrap up and we uh, want to make sure that you know uh, you're appreciated loved well respected and we look forward to uh, hearing your project in the near future <laughs>